Alright YouTubers, two minutes of film with this and I finally figured out why JMRI will not read the SEHC. Now, have a little bit of patience and please, uh, okay you can leave, you know, why didn't you see that comments, but just don't make them too bad. And I'm kind of slapping myself on the head for not realizing this first, you know. Duh, Jacob, why didn't you just look in the box in the first place? But, uh, before we get started, I'm just going to remind everyone of my signaling setup that I have. My layout uses um, Bachman Dynamics for DCC, so I don't have a Digitrax command station. Now, hopefully sometime in the future I'll get one, as of right now I don't have one. That also means I don't have a loco net which is what takes the signals from the compute the input signals from the SEHC to the computer well to the converter and then to the computer so we need two things I need two things to make this work one is I need a way to replicate the local net signal and two which I'll show you in a minute I need a way to, oh, what's the term? Internal jumper. I need an internal jumper. Um, two sites to go look, well, Railroad Circuit Kits and Dick Bronson. I've given him a couple calls over the month, and he's helped me with both of these things. So, first off, huge, huge thanks to him. Really appreciate it. I've been wanting working signals for years, and I'm so much closer. Yay! And everyone who's waiting for it on YouTube, um, Railfan220, JJL Gravy, sorry for the wait, but we got all. This is the last thing that could possibly be standing in the way. So I get this, and we're good to go. Give me a couple, about another month, and hopefully I'll have first signal up and going. Of course, I still got all the computer programming, computer stuff to do. So I don't know. But one hurl at a time, at least now I can actually read the, at least now the computer can actually read the SEHC and program it. So that's the main hurl. Um, like I said earlier, we need two things. We need an internal jumper and we need a 12 volt DC power supply. Um, hopefully the grafting in of that is either on this video or the previous one assuming I can figure out how to combine multiple clips but I've got a whole bunch of clips showing that process and actually I'll just show you the joint right now really um, there you go I, I know it's a mess of wire and heat shrink tubing and insulation tape but it's effective um, so what it is, this is a 12-volt DC power supply from Radio Shack, variable. Actually, no, this is just 12 volts. This one isn't variable. Um, I've just know I've got two separate, one for the local net and the other for the SEHC, because the SEHC needs a separate power source. So that's one half of it. I've got the data. Now we look at our actual USB for a minute, just a minute, the lighting's awful. Okay, there, that's much better with my brand new shop light. Okay, upon looking at our SEHC, we have three LEDs. We have two green, there you go, green and a red. The red on the air side indicates local net status, um, bottom, no. Oh. Red indicates local net messages. Bottom is local net status, which is being supplied by the 12 volt. So that light's on, so we know that's coming in. The top one is power from the computer, which is on, because the computer's on, so we have that taken care of. So by the time I fix this, I should be able to go to configure SEHC, SEHC Okay, DS64, because that's what I have up here. I should be able to go to this, click Read From, 
and that red LED should blink to show me that the computer is saying, hey DS64, what's your status? And the DS64 is saying, oh, here's my status. These, op these options are set at this, this one is set at this, you know, etc, etc. So, um, like I said, using JMRI. So that's the things we need, that's an introduction. So now let's actually open up this loco buffer, USB, and see what we got. Oh wait, one more thing. Um, okay, I want just to note I have USB in my version. Okay, let me unplug this thing from the computer. There, that's better. Ah, focus. There, you can just pause it. Version 2.070 SN. Now, you'll have. I'd still suggest going to Railroad Circuit Kit and even giving Mr. Bronson a call. He's wonderful. Great help. Um, but for my version, this internal jumper needs to be fixed. Now in later ones that's solved and he's fixed that. This one it ain't. And so when we open this up we'll see what needs to be fixed and there will be a couple other things I'll need to explain. But first thing we do is we'll take a flathead screwdriver and use those grooves on the end to open this baby up. So let's do that and see what we get. <laughs> 